When looking at stress and trauma, it's really important to keep in mind that these things are on a spectrum, like any mental health issue. So on one end of the spectrum we have stress, and on the other we have PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder, which is basically a range of symptoms that occur after you've had prolonged exposure to a traumatic event. What's also really important to keep in mind and to remember is that stress itself is actually a positive thing. It's a way of coping in the environment and a little bit of stress helps to mobilize us and get us ready to, to face the environment in a productive way. The problem is when we have this stress knob turned up all the time. I often get asked this question, why do these processes happen? And one of the theories is, is that up until about 100,000 years ago, we were at about halfway up the food chain. And then suddenly, because of a sudden push in our cognitive abilities, we rose to the top of the food chain. And yet biologically, we were still operating from halfway up the food chain. This just meant that we're not, or just means that we're not quite as sort of, we don't have quite a calm constitution as, for example, other predators like lions and killer whales. We've still got that stress response. A very simple way of understanding the brain is dividing it into three components. The reptilian part, the limbic system, and the frontal cortex. What happens during a traumatic event is that the amygdala gets turned right on. And this is basically the emergency part of the brain. So hormones are secreted which puts our nervous system into action. We're ready to fight or flee. The really interesting thing is that when this is happening, our frontal cortex is switched off. And it's here where we analyze and make meaning of our experiences. But this part is pretty much turned off as all energy is focused on bare survival. This can explain why flashbacks can be so powerful. Our normal memory system is turned off and we're really experiencing things on a visceral level as if for the first time. You know, all the, the, we're flooded with the sensations of the actual traumatic event. And this is because our brains have not, has not had time to integrate process and contextualize the event. So what happens at this point is the amygdala is the sort of emergency part of the brain and it's sending all these signals of we better kind of get ourselves together and either fight or flee. And at the same time the interesting part is that because the meaning making process is being cut off, what ends up happening is when we remember these events, we remember them as flashbacks, as pure experiences because we haven't had time to process them, to make meaning of them, and to integrate them. So a large part of the therapeutic work with people who've suffered from traumatic experiences is to really start to integrate these two parts of the brain, the amygdala and the reptilian part, with the more sort of high-functioning, meaning-making processes. The vagal nerve is the main cranial nerve that comes from our brain and kind of links back behind our throat and connects to all the major organs. So the heart, the liver, the stomach and the kidneys. And so understanding this means that when we're affected intensely on a mental level, we're also really, really affected on a bodily level as well. Really important to keep this, this in mind as we work through these processes. So what's really important to remember is that when we're healing ourselves through these traumatic experiences is that we're really doing it with our whole body and our minds. So it's not just our brains that are working, but we're doing it from an embodied process. Um, and in my other videos, I really go into more detail about how we can go about doing this.